So it's good to see so many faces. I hope I can share something that you don't know after this. And I'm very happy to talk about more about it after this, uh, this presentation. So my name is Mia and I'm from Septima and we are also a small sustaining member of QGIS. And then I'm also a part of the Danish QGIS user group, which was, I was a part of um, creating back in 2015, I think it was. In this presentation, I'll start with a little introduction to what is a layout template. And then I'm going to talk about some specific elements <laughs> some specific elements of a layout template. Then I'm going to talk a bit about how you can guide the user to how to use this layout template. And then I have a few conclusion in the end. So that's the talk, what it's going to be about. This is an example of a layout. It's also an example of a layout template. And a layout template is a really, really good way to have when you have to create maps because then it's really easy to create maps. From time to time in Septima, we get asked if we can help some of our customers to create these layout templates. And what I'm going to talk about now is some of my experiences of how you can make these layout templates more user-friendly. What can be a really good thing in an organization to have these layout templates, maybe on a shared drive, and then you can set QGIS up. So when you want to create a new layout, then the layout templates is shown from the layout manager in a dialog and the user can select the layout, the layout templates. This is a little movie showing how fast you can make a map if you have a layout template. It's of the Little Mermaid in Copenhagen. Create a layout from the layout template. Now there's a few adjustments to the layout template. Set the scale to a nice. And then if it's how you want it, then you can save it as a PDF. So with a very, very few clicks, you can create a new layout. But in order for this layout template to work in a good way, there's a few tips and tricks, and oh, there's a lot of tips and tricks, but I'll share a few of them. And I'm going to go into the different parts, a selected part, the map, the scale bar, the text box, a legend, and a title. And we're going to go back to this layout template. And a layout template is just a layout that you save as a layout template and then this converted into a QPT file. The first thing is the map and that's shown with the orange box up here. And there's a really, really good setting in QGIS that for a map, you can avoid a case like this. This is a, a road name, Churchill Parken. And you can see there's a conflict between the scale bar and the label from the map. In a two clicks, you can click up here, and then you can say, avoid place, placing labels under these items. And then if you check the scale bar, then QGIS automatically moves the road name from here up to here, so it looks better. So very, very easy, but it can really help the maps to look better. Then we are going to move on to the scale bar. And a scale bar in a layout can be both a scale bar as shown here, and then it can also be the numeric scale bar. The scale bar as the, the, um, this one, there's also a few things that you can do with that. First of all, the safest um, setting of a scale bar is to uh, choose fit, fit segment width, because then you, the scale bar can adjust, but it cannot adjust along, so it's getting out of the map. Because in this, I say fit segment width, and then it will be in, be in between 40 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Then it will work on a map, where I've zoomed a bit out. 
It knows how much space, uh, space it can take up. And it also works if I zoom closer on into the little mermaid, it still shows and it, it knows how much uh, space it can take. And that is, of course, very important if you know that the layout template should be used for maps where you both zoom in and zoom out. The layout scale, uh, the scale bar, it's also a very good idea to make sure that you can always see, because if I didn't have the white uh, thing around, then I wouldn't be able to read the 80 meters here. And if it's out in a place where you can read it, you can't see the white, error, the white um, thing anyway. And that's also very, very easy to set up in the font and then draw a text buffer. And that's what I find is so um, amazing with QGIS, that there are so many settings that you can use in various ways. Another very important thing, and that's related to the scale bar, but that's also important for some of the other, el other elements that you can have on a layout. That's to avoid a case like this, where suddenly the scale bar moves out in the white, that doesn't look really nice. So to avoid that, it's really important to think about the reference point, and this setting is for all the elements that you can add to a layout. If for the scale bar you set the reference point to this, it means that if suddenly the scale bar needs to be a little bit bigger, it will grow in this direction and not outside here, and you avoid that case that I showed before. Now we're moving on to the scale as a numeric. And uh, quite often, when I make a map or lay a layout from a layout template, I always end up with this case up here, where I have a very, very, very specific scale. Uh, yeah, with six decimals. And that's not really nice. And it happens if, uh, if I have a map and a layout and then I say fit the, the map to the map ext uh, the canvas extent, and then it fits. And even though it's only three decimals in the scale, it's six decimals down in the numeric scale. But you can also avoid it. And I was really, really happy when I found it. I found it like two months ago. I didn't know about this setting. I was happy. Customize, because of course you can do it in QGIS. Customize, and then you can say round to zero decimals. I made a, a little um, feature request to change the default to zero decimals. And then you can always change back to six decimals if you want this very, very, very precise. Another thing that you can do with the numeric scale, I haven't used it, and I found it when I was doing this presentation, that you can also say round two and then significant figures. That means that you can, instead of uh, having one, in this case, 1,718, you can say, just show it to, uh, with two, so then it will make these two zeros, even though the map is another uh, scale. It's always how much can you change when you display something and it's not that scale, but it's pretty cool that it's, uh, it's uh, possible in QGIS. Yes. <clears throat> Quite often, people want to have some text information in a layout. And a text information could be a text box like this, with a date of creation, who created the map, department, the scale, and the map credits. And I find that it's really good to use the fixed table for that. And then you can also, in this case, I have chosen a gray uh, color for the, for the lines, but you can also just decide to have it uh, invisible. But you can still then control how the text is placed underneath so you don't have some text that suddenly moves a little bit and you have to adjust it. So the fixed table is really good for um, text information in the map. 
And then you can add it, and you can go to the edit table, and you can set it up how you want it. It works really, really well when you have some variables, like you can see up here, with the date, the format date, um, expression, the user full name, and map credits, where you can use these uh, expressions. A thing that can also be useful is that you can make your own variables in QGIS. In this case, I made a variable called uh, department. And that's something you can do in your QGIS user. So I've added a new variable called it department, and then I've entered a text, the GIS department. Then it's saved in my QGIS user. So next time when I open this map, a layout, it will show GIS departments. The good thing about doing that, and that's only if you have layout templates that you want to use for different departments or something else, then you can have, if a person from another department, then in their QGIS user setting, you can change it to the right thing for them. And when they open the same layout template, it will show what's entered in their environment. So it can be quite a good way to have just one layout template and also having to avoid to have to change too much when you open a layout template. One thing, if you want to have text on the map and you want the user to do something with the text, so it's not an automatic text, it's the case with this field called notes, then I think it's the most user-friendly to have one more element, a label element. Here you can add a note about the map. So have it here and then place it on the top over here so it's two different elements on the same spot because then the user just have to click. Here you can add a note about this and then enter this note. So it's easier than having it inside the fixed table because then the user has to go into, um, go here, edit table, and then in here, and then inside up in the notes. So I find it's the most user-friendly to have it as an extra element on the top. Then we have the legends. And I always find that the legend is the most difficult to look good in a map. And that's both in QGIS and that's also in MapInfo and all the other ones. So then, if some of you are going to make layout templates after this presentation, it's really important to think about how do you think people will use this layout template? When I make layout templates, I often leave the legend blank. I always remove the auto update. I don't like that really. really. And then always, this is a really nice setting, only show items inside link map. I like this setting because then when the user have to make a layout from the layout template, the user have to decide, click on the, the green uh, cross and then decide which layer should go into this layout. And I like that the user have to take a little bit of think about what is important to show in the legend. But again, if it's in another environment where it's always the same layers that's on the map, then it's nice to set the legend up so it looks nice and you can use all the time you can use on the, the um, legend. The title. I like to have the title as the variable layout name. And now this is made as a layout template. So then I have named this layout for intertitle. And why have, why have I done this? That is because I like when a user afterwards is going to use this, this layout template, then when the, the person this um, dialog is shown, then they say intertitle, okay, I'm gonna enter the title. And then the result will be the Little Mermaid. 
and it's quite nice because that's also the default name when exporting to a PDF. So it kind of makes sense to use the name, insert once, and then use it different places. I could have shown a lot more about the different elements, but I also want to cover a bit about how you can guide the user on how to use the layout templates. Because even though you can set up a lot of things in QGIS, it can still be a bit difficult to use the layout in QGIS. So I think it's a good idea to think about the element list. You can name the elements in a good way so the user will easily know what's inside each of the elements. And you can also, um, yeah, descriptive names. And you can also give the names with a little indication of how the user should use this element. In this case, it's map update this to be sure that the user knows that he needs to, or he or she needs to update the map. And also this, here you can add a note about the map. It's kind of a way to guide the user on how to use the layout template. It's also good to think about that you can lock different elements. If you do that, you can, uh, then the user, you can avoid that the user suddenly moves some of the elements and then has to move it back by locking it. But it also means that then the user have to, to click on the text in order to update the element. And that's also why I never lock the map, because if I lock the map, then the user can't use that button where you can uh, move the map. So I never lock the map even though sometimes the map is moved and then the user have to move it back. Another possibility is also to have hidden elements as a default. It can be an overview map. So as a default, it's hidden. But then if the user needs to have an overview map, the user just click next to the overview map and it's in the layout. So that's the default is not to have the overview map, but it's really easy to get the overview map in the layout. And in that way, you can also avoid having a layout template with and without the overview map, you can have it in one. And of course, you can also think about it of other elements yet yeah, that you can have them in the map, in the layout, but have them as um, hidden or oh, invisible. For a layout to look good, it's very important to have some space around the different elements. And that can also be difficult for people to use and how to place them correct. And then you can use the guidelines, horizontal and vertical guidelines, and then try to avoid the person to put something out next to the margins. And it can also be easier to, if the user need to place something here, then it will um, uh, merge or follow that line. So you get some nice lines that's um, nice to look at. So in conclusion, when you're going to make a layout template, it's very important to think about the different elements and use all the things that you can do to set them up in a good way. And it's also very, very important to try to think of how this layout template can be used in different, um, how it will work in different cases, visibility, reference points, and all that kind of things. And then also uh, think about how you can guide the user, how to use the layout template as you intended to be used. So I hope that you get some tricks and tips and that you can use some of it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, that was great. I'm really looking forward to doing some uh, templates all right, so do we have some questions? Uh, there is. My question is a little more general. It's not so much about the templates, but in QGIS, you can use dozens of layouts within one GIS project. Uh, in your opinion, 
what are the advantages or disadvantages of having several layouts in one project? Or would you say, okay, one layout using for one project, and if you want to show something different, um, build up a new project? Um, it depends on how many layouts. Sometimes QGIS can be really slow if you have a lot of layouts saved in one layout template. Um, and so I like to make layouts from a layout template, and then I have multiple layouts in one QGIS project, as long as you don't get like a thousand or something. Um, because then it's easy to go back to that layout if I suddenly need to change a little bit in it. And then I also find it's easier to use some of the variables when creating from a layout template. All right, some more questions? Maybe about the templates, how are you dealing with the overview maps? Because what I find pretty annoying in the QGIS is work with multiple map windows in one uh, template. Are you making some uh, different groups for the maps and different uh, the layout views or s the, the temps or another work workflow? Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of the map theme that you can use in that way to control which layers should go into the different maps. And for the overview map to work, so if you have a, maybe a layout, a QGIS uh, template, and in that one you can have what you need for the background maps, and you have, can also save a map theme in a, in a, a QGIS project uh, template. And in this way it will work, the overview map. But the map theme can control which layers is in uh, in the map. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more question. I'm not sure if it's beyond your, your talk. Um, I've been using an atlas to create views of um, some features that are repeated throughout my map. There are hydrological features. And I need the layouts to be guided not only by the feature, which is simple is enough, but also by a secondary feature which is associated, right? Because I need to deal with width and height, and so there are two features together, cross-section and so. Is there a way to join or to carry this information from, like if you have multiple pages in an atlas, it's generated from a feature, like to, to, to carry two parameters across two associated features? I'm not sure if that's clear enough. Maybe I'll come mm, I'm not. To, I don't totally understand the question, but something a bit related to it, which I found really, really nice with the atlas, is also that you can, for the atlas, you can also specify a width and a height for the layout, and in that way, you can also make an atlas, and then it can uh, rotate based on the map extent, and that's. Uh, if you Google it, I found the expression that I could use, and I was really I thought, okay, of course, QGIS can do that when you have the um, overwrite. So maybe that can help because, yeah, and I have it somewhere on my computer how to, uh, so you can just uh, come and talk. Hmm? All right, cool. So thank you very much, Mie, yeah. and uh, there is a small present from us uh, to you. So thank you again. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Lovely. <laughs>